Deuteronomy chapter 20. Now, I will not read the whole chapter to begin with. I do plan on reading much of it, if not all of it, as we go through this. But the context of my message this morning is taken from the whole chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 20. And of course, in this chapter, we read of God's law to Israel concerning their warfare. And that's basically what it's talking about. Now, I actually have four things I want to give you this morning, but the first one is what I want to emphasize the most. I'm not prepared to say it's the most important because who am I to declare what is the most important? Who am I to say that? But it's what I want to try to stress the most. Therefore, for those who are listening live or online, whatever, I mean, you'll hear the whole message if you stay with us. But for those who hear this on TV, they may only get the first point. It's just according to how long that, where that timer's at. I don't want to rush through the first point. That's what I'm trying to get. Now, as I said, we have here in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1 through 20, we have God's law concerning Israel's warfare. Here's a question. What lessons can we draw from this text? I must say, far more than what I will have time to give you this morning. And I must add far more than what I have ability to give you this morning. For I am sure, having done this for 36, 37 years, I read a text, I preach from a text, I go back to that text later, and I begin to realize how little I knew about that text when I preached on it the first time, or second time, or third time for that matter. So let's go. But what I want to do is go to the end of the chapter, and then we will work our way toward the first part of the chapter. So we'll start at the end and work our way to the beginning. So let's look at these lessons. Here's the first lesson. It's what I want to concentrate on for the most of my time. Here's the first lesson. Israel was to not cut down food-bearing trees for warfare. Now this was a, I know this word could be misunderstood, this was a practical command. Yes. And let's read it, verses 19 and 20, last part of the chapter. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time. In other words, this city is probably fortified, maybe, maybe a walls or something around that city, and they're besieging the city. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's life, to employ them in the siege. Only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat. So you see what he said. Don't cut down, if you will we'll make a battering ram. If you're going to make a ladder to scale the wall, right. whatever, if you're cutting down trees as a weapon, yeah. don't cut down the fruit bearing trees. Exactly. Don't, and, I'm, and, and forgive me if I mention a tree that's so little you really couldn't use, but an almond tree. Don't cut that down. Yeah. Why? Because if you do, it's like the old phrase, you'll be cutting off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he says, only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat, thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with them with thee. And here's, I started to title it this, but I, I didn't. Until it be subdued. I thank God for that truth when it comes to the gospel. I'm glad God Almighty besieged me until I was subdued. Amen. That's it. Now, I know there are those today who are preaching that God has put forth his best effort. Yeah. Or maybe on occasion he has a big spurt and really tries to get somebody saved, but they actually believe that it's not up to God. They will actually say, and I know we say this a lot, it seems so cliche for me to say it over and over, but this is a common phrase that people who profess to be Christian Jews, God has done all he can do, now it's up to you. 
that is not the truth. That is a lie. God don't have spurts. He's the almighty king of heaven and earth. And jump to the beginning. Verse 1, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and people more than thou, what is the natural inclination? Whoa. Whoa. Look. Be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God. God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Consider, my brothers and sisters, what God did for you back yonder. Yes, sir. Even in your experience, and we don't rely on the experience. Mm -hmm. We rely upon Christ, but he gives us experiences. Yes, sir. And look at where you were and where God's brought you to today. Exactly. Do you really think there's any enemy out there that he can't conquer? Yeah, that's it. And yet... Our old self, our old man is prone to shrivel mm -hmm. You're right. because of the immensity of the enemy yeah. that's in front of us. Yeah. So remember, Israel was to not cut down food-bearing trees for warfare. We have a warfare. Yes. Paul mentions it. Ed calls it a warfare. He uses military language. And it's actually recorded for us in 2 Corinthians 10. And you could be turning there if you're following along. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And let me get to it as well. Because I do want to look at that some. As I said, my first point for the TV may be the only point that makes it to the TV. In our warfare, we must never compromise. That's the lesson I see. In this warfare, do not compromise the truth of the gospel. You will cut off your nose to spite your face. Exactly. What am I talking about? What do I mean when I say that? In other words, two major things here in this first point. Never dull the gospel sword. That's right. yeah. Amen. Never dull the gospel sword. Yeah. Or... The scripture's truth. Yes. Now, the gospel is all truth. Yes, sir. The gospel is all truth. Yeah. But this book contains truth that is not the gospel. That's true. Now, you understand what I'm saying here. I think most of you do. Yeah, you're right. The gospel is all truth. And the gospel is all about Jesus Christ the Lord. Yes, but in this book, this book talks about us as well. That's exactly Who we are. And what we are. And it's the truth. Yes, sir. And this book describes us like we are. Yes. Especially like we are in Adam. Mm -hmm. Like we are by nature. Mm -hmm. You're right. But that's not the gospel. Exactly. The message this book conveys about us is not the gospel. As I've said before, it is the reason we need the gospel. Yes, sir. That's but again, in our warfare, in this battle, in this battle, never dull the gospel sword or the scripture's truth. Here's the point. Subjugation is the goal. Yes, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Subjugation is the goal. Yeah, yeah. That's the end. Do we not read that? Yeah. All God's with you. Yes. You're going into battle. You got enemies. Yeah. And some of those enemies vary. The enemies yeah. differ. But they're all enemies. Exactly. But some are nearer than others. Yes. Some are more an immediate threat than others. Mm -hmm. But here's what you do in the war. And in the end, here's the truth. Don't cut down the food-bearing trees. Don't dull the edge of the gospel. Now think about this. You should be at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3 through 5. Remember, until it be subdued thousands today who profess Christianity yeah. who say they preach the gospel they talk about preach the gospel they say on TV radio internet send us money to help us keep preaching the gospel and like Henry Mahan once said and probably said it many a times but I never hear them preaching the gospel Exactly. they're always talking about preaching the gospel and us sending them money so they continue to preach the gospel but they never get down to actually preaching the gospel right. and when they do 
they distort the gospel. Yeah. They pervert the gospel. Yeah. They dull the edge. They sit there and beat that gospel sword on a rock. You're right. And dull the edge of the gospel. Now listen to how what Paul wrote. See, I didn't turn away from it. I turned back. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And you, I know this is familiar to every one of you here. But let's read it again. And I'll just begin in verse 3 for the sake of time. For though we walk in the flesh, and that's different from other places where Paul talked about walking in the flesh. He taught, we walk in this body. Exactly. We walk in these corporeal, yeah. right. mortal, mm -hmm. corruptible bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of us have been around long enough, we have experienced the effect of that. Yeah. But for though we walk in the flesh, now here's the difference between us and and Israel as a nation back in that time. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Israel's battles. Now, there was a spiritual element to it. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me. But they took up physical arms. And they were going into a land that God had given them that other people owned. And they were going to subdue. Right? Right? Subdue. I'm not here to justify my God. Our God is in the heavens. We've already heard this. And he's done whatsoever he hath pleased. Amen. I'm not here to argue, as some theologians have, the justice or injustice of war. No. I'm not here to do that. I'm just presenting the truth of God as it gives it in this scripture. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not cutting down trees to make ladders, exactly. are we? Yeah. We're not cutting down trees to make a battering ram. Yeah. We're not picking up guns and swords, but we have a weapon. Look at it. For the weapons of our warfare, we have weapons, I should say. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Amen. Mighty through God. Not mighty because of our eloquence. Not mighty because of our prowess. Right. Not mighty because of our wisdom, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting, now we're getting it. Now he, he's used the illustration, pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. Casting down what? What men think. There you go. Hmm? Amen. What right. men think. But you offend people when you preach like you do. If I'm preaching the gospel, it's going to. Yeah. It offended me when I first heard the gospel. Now, for years I'd heard a perversion of the gospel and knew nothing of this way or that way. But when I first began to hear the gospel, when the two-edged sword of God's gospel started striking me, it hurt. It hurt. It made me angry. Yes, sir. It made me mad. Casting down imaginations and every high thing, not just a few high things. Yeah, right. Well, we need to fight against abortion. That's all well and good. But you can, you can, you can stop abortion and men still go die and go to hell. Yeah. Exactly right. You hear what I'm saying? Well, we need to shut down the booze parlors. need to shut down the red light districts. Do all that. If it's in your power to stop all those things, then stop them. But it ain't in our power. Look at where our country's at today. And we're a civilized Christian nation, don't you know? Right? Mm -hmm. And know what people talk? I mean, you've got Democrats and Republicans. Both of them claim to be Christians, and they're on opposite ends of the pole. Exactly. Mm hmm? Yeah. Mm hmm? Look, casting down imaginations and every high thing, here it is, that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and that is twofold. One, God will conquer your heart and mind to bow down to what Christ has accomplished. Yes. 
to bow down to who he is and what he did, what he accomplished, what he secured when he first came to this earth in human flesh and died on that tree, was buried, raised again, and taken back to glory, now seated at the right hand of God, expecting, expecting. That's amazing for me to even think about. Here is God in the flesh, expecting what? Till his enemies be made his footstool. Now, you know, you've seen the pictures of, especially years ago, when a king is conquered, and if he's still living, the conqueror will come and put his foot on the neck. Mm, that's, the, that's the words that's, that's being used exactly. here. Look, but it's also this. God's people were brought to obey Christ. Yes, sir. And the first place of obedience is to believe him. Yes, sir. Everything else flows from that. That which is not of faith is what? Sin. Yeah. Sin. No matter how religious and moral it might be. Exactly. If it's not of faith, it's a sin. Exactly. Thousands take the Lord's table. Isn't that a good thing? Shouldn't everybody take the Lord's table? No. No. Well, shouldn't everybody be baptized? No. John the Baptist refused to baptize some folk, didn't he? Yes, he did. Do you remember that? He said, you show me you mean business with God. Yeah. Now, I'm paraphrasing what he said. He said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You bring forth works meet for repentance. You show me you mean business. You show me God's done something for you. Then you tell me, you show me God subdued you. You show me God bowed you down. Yeah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Why? Because God Almighty has a people he's going to conquer. Yes. And he will besiege them until they are subdued. Amen. And while most that profess to be Christians don't like that, don't want to hear that, most probably have never even heard that. Don't you figure? Most know nothing about a conquering Christ, do they? Well, that's Old Testament, right? Oh, no. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. And I'm glad. I'm glad that God besieged my city. I'm glad he built up bulwarks against me. He brought out the battering ram of his gospel and banged and banged and banged on my castle walls yes, until they fell flat. Yes. And King Jesus marched in and put me in the dirt, Mason, and put his foot on my neck. There you go. And it didn't feel good while it was happening, but I thank God now that it has. Yes. Amen. What are some of these enemies? What are our enemies? What, we know who Israel's enemies was. They were named Hittites, right? Especially though that's the ones that were close. Yeah. Now there were enemies that were out there in the periphery. Yeah. But look, at here's, here's, here's some of our enemies. It's everything that's hostile to the truth of God. Yes. That's an enemy. Yes, sir. Everything that's hostile to the truth of God. That's right. And that, can, that includes abortion. And it includes many First Baptist churches in many towns that are preaching a perversion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes. That's right. Here it is. Let me give you this a, a, a short list. You may not think it's short when I start with it, but it's a short list. Human will, that's an enemy. Men call it free will. You know what the scripture calls it? Self-will. God's word calls it self-will. That's an enemy. And this is what God is conquering in the person of his son. Human will, opinion. Well, I know what I think. How many times, well, especially years ago, when the battle just raged, you know? Yeah. How many said, well, I know what I believe. It don't matter what you believe. The question is not what you believe. Three different groups of people came to Christ and asked him what he believed about three different subjects. He gave them a quick answer and moved on. And then he, then he asked them a question. Yeah. What think ye of Christ? Exactly. Hmm? They want to know, should you pay taxes? Uh, blah, 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 blah. He answered their question, oh, yeah. but then moved to the question, what think ye of Christ? Now, here was the Christ asking them, what do you think of me? That's exactly right. Now, these people believed the Christ was coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But when he came, they rebelled against him. Amen. All the while, still looking for the Christ to come. And he was seated right in front of them. Exactly. Opinion. Theories. Theories. Oh, how our world is filled with theories. It used to be called the theory of evolution. Did we get smarter now? It becomes now just evolution. You remember that? I was taught the theory of evolution when I was in school, but it was called that. At least they were honest enough then to call it that. They found no more proof of evolution than they found proof that my feet have set on the moon. Exactly. Theories. Proud reasonings. We've heard about that this morning. Speculative arguments. Well, what if? Yeah. What if? You could deal with what ifs till the cows come home, as we say, and you don't get anywhere. Exactly. Speculative argument. Pride. We heard about that, didn't we? Pride. Self-righteousness. I'm a sinner, but I'm not an ungodly sinner. Hmm? In some circles, yeah. it's almost cliche today to say, well, I'm a sinner. Oh, I'm just a sinner. But yet, are you? Ask, ask somebody sometime. You're an ungodly sinner, right? Well, I know I ain't that bad. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm a sinner, but I ain't that bad. And isn't it amazing how we could all, I don't care if you're the worst whore on the street, selling yourself for 10 bucks. And I'd say you get a lot of business if you did it for 10 bucks. You can always find somebody that's worse than you. Oh, yeah. But we're not talking about somebody else. We're talking about God Almighty and His holy law. How do you stack up to that? That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Self-righteousness. As one, as one preacher said, and I think Paul said it, or at least alluded to it, we, we could be proud even our, in our own humility. Pride of face, pride of race, and we even get proud of grace. Oh, I ain't like, at least I ain't like them bunch of free willers over there. Well, I was one one time. Oh, yeah, exactly. I was one one time, and King Jesus came in and conquered me. Yes. Conquered yeah, yeah. me. Self sufficiency. Human autonomy. Boy, don't we want that today in this country? Oh, yeah. Huh? We don't even want the police to arrest suspects anymore. Yeah. Hmm? Human autonomy. Emotionalism. We are. Filled, flooded, Christian churches, put that in quotes, are filled with emotionalism. Yeah. Here's Christ's emotionalism. He feeds people and gives their bellies full. Yes, and then he turns around and said, the only reason you're following me is because you got your bellies full. Yes, exactly. Now let me speak words of truth to you. Yes, sir. And when he did, he had 5,000. There were probably more than that. But he had 5,000 yeah. plus his twelve. And they all said, Phew, when he began to speak the truth, no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I'll raise that man up the last day. And they shall all be taught of God. Who These people, yeah. these elect people, these predestinated right. people. Preacher, I never heard something like that before. We, you need to get to a church that preaches those things. Yeah, there you go. That's what you get. Leave where you're at. You don't have to come here, but go somewhere where they're preaching the truth of God. Exactly. And then they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and learned of the Father. So that includes how many? Every one of them. That's right. Every man, therefore, that has heard and learned of the Father does what? He comes to me. Amen. That's God Almighty coming in and besieging your city until you are subdued. And when God does that to you, You'll be happy. Yes. Yeah. You'll be happy. Yes, sir. And you'll know it wouldn't have worked had God tried it any other way. Exactly. Here's a try Jesus. Boy, ain't that a big one. Try Jesus. You don't try Jesus. You bow down to Jesus Christ. Amen. You submit at his feet. Now, it would be easier on us as the elect of God if we just bowed down to the truth when we first heard it. Yeah. Would it not? Oh, yeah. But we've got so much pride and rebellion in here. We will not do it, and we still got trouble with it even after he subdues us. Amen. He knocks down our castle walls and crumbles it into powder, and every particle reeks with pride and self-righteousness. And that what? 
autonomy, <coughs> emotionalism. Here's a self determination. Oh, yeah. Anarchy. Yeah. Anarchy. I tell you how I know men hate God because look at how men and women are doing in this country today. Yeah. They despise government. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. You think they don't despise God? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hmm? They despise God. But I'll tell you, God's conquering some of them. Yes, sir. <laughs> it, it may to us, it may to us seem to be nothing. In, we, don't, we don't see all that, Joe, but God's conquering some people. Yes, sir. And here's another thing that's going to get to people's goats. God's going to bring you the gospel through another sinner. Yes, sir. He's not going to come down and preach it to you yourself personally. Right. There's going to be a conquered sinner that God's going to send to you to preach to you of the conquering Savior. Yes, sir. And that's why, because it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Let me get to the second point in number one first. Remember, don't take off the gospel sword, the edge of the gospel sword. Jesus Christ accomplished some things when he died. Yes, sir. But here's the second edge of that sharp sword, the scripture's truth. Isaiah puts it this way. Now, I know he's talking about Israelites. But Romans 3, Paul lets, Paul lets us know Jews and Gentiles, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it exactly. says we are wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, you, you, you've not been bound up, never mollified with them. And why should I strike you more? You'll just revolt more and more. What's got to happen? God's got to heal the wounds. Yes, sir. He's got to heal the wounds. God has to abase our pride. God has to show us what our self-righteousness really is in his sight. And I thank God that he's doing it by his spirit through the preaching of the gospel. His spirit will come and breathe life in a sovereign act, a sovereign fiat of God. But he will, in every case, send his gospel to that person that he's breathe life upon, and they will find themselves conquered at the feet of King Jesus. Now, that's my question to everyone. If you listen to me on Sunday morning, when this tape, this actual broadcast goes out, I'm asking you, is that the Jesus that you claim to know? That's it. That's exactly I'm going to talk about this weak, feminine, right. sissy Jesus is preached today. Oh, right. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty, yeah. manifest in the flesh. Yeah. Now, let me move on. Now, that was all for the TV. That's all they'll get. Turn back to Deuteronomy 20, and I'll, 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 I'll move quickly. <laughs> I won't read anymore, but I'll just make these statements. Let me give you the other, other three things. Israel's enemies are declared. We see that in chapter 20, verses 10 through 18. Some enemies are out there. For, they're not in the land. Yeah. And you preach what to them? Yeah. Peace. Peace. If they bow to the peace you're proclaiming, you all is well. That's right. All is well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you, you read it. All is well. Hmm? But if not, then they will be destroyed. That's what it says. They would, God will do the destroy. I don't have to do the destroy. Exactly. They will be destroyed. Yeah. But there are enemies that are inside the periphery. Yeah. They're in the compound. <laughs> they're in the land. Yeah. And they're going to lead you away because you ain't strong enough to resist them. You'll follow after their gods. You'll follow after their false religion. And what happened? Israel did not totally drive out everyone. And what did Israel do? They followed their religions, did they not? Oh, they give it a good old Jewish twang. Had some sheep and some goats and some, and, and, you know, and some other things for sacrifices. But God said, I'm tired of your sacrifices. He told them to offer them. But they're not worth spit unless you do it with eyes toward the coming Messiah. And somebody said, well, those people didn't know anything about the Messiah, yet they did. Moses told them about him. Yes, sir. Moses told them about him. Now think about it. There are enemies far and wide. Not all, in, not all enemies are the same, though they are all are enemies. Right. Jude put it this way. There are some men before of old ordained to this condemnation. Did not? And that's not, it's not before of old God ordained them to hell. Well, here's some good folks, but God said, I will send that group to hell. That's not what it's talking about. That's not the truth of God. They were ordained to the condemnation of what? Lying on God. Walking after false ways. Yes, sir. 
living in immorality and unrighteousness. That's the context that you... And Peter comes along and basically says the same thing. And he said that Peter goes so far as to say it, it had been better for some people not to even heard the way of truth yes, sir. than after they heard it to turn from the holy commandment which was delivered unto them. And yet Christ gave the command, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every Amen. creature. Don't try to figure out God, and there's no need to try to justify God. No. Just preach all that God says. Yes, sir. You know, if a tree is a tree for battle, chop it down and let the chips fall where they may. Right? That's right. Right? But don't chop down the food bank trees. You're cutting off. If we dull the edge of the gospel, we may all go into apostasy. Yeah. That's right. And I don't want to go there. No. I don't want to go there. Not all enemies are the same. Second, or thirdly, not every Israelite was to be on the front lines but to be in their God-ordained place. You remember yes. reading that? Yes, sir. You see, not everyone's going to stand here. Yeah. God didn't ordain that. No. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to try to do it because I don't want to leave something out. Again, I said, not every Israelite was to be on the front lines, but to be in their God-ordained place. You see that in chapter 20, verses 5 through 9. And, of course, you are aware, are all apostles? What's the answer? Yeah. No. Are all prophets? No. And I'm, the, I'm, not, I'm neither apostle or prophet. But I pray, God, Joe, I'm not envious of that. Exactly. But yeah. some of you, I said, well, I, you know, I, I wonder. There are times when I wonder, if I wasn't preaching, would I really come? Hmm? If God took away my voice, if something happens to me, Mason, and I can't speak no more and it has to be Joe and Paul, what would I do? What would I do? Yeah. You don't have to worry about that, do you? A couple of you might. But Joe, that scares me. That scares me. Because I pray that this thing is real. And let me tell you, we all, we, we are members of one body, but we are members in particular. And God puts you where he wants you. Don't envy somebody else. Don't envy somebody else. God is all wise. He knows. Yes. He knows where he's going to use you. I didn't say where you'll be best used. I say he knows where he, what he's going to enable you for where you are. Yeah. It may be, no, it may, I know this could be misunderstood, but it may be no more than putting $10 a month at that plate yeah. just to help out. Do you realize Paul turned me and Joe on to some information that just, that just brightened up my day? <laughs> Do you know that the past, not this Sunday, but the past three Sundays that we were, the, uh, the, the messages were listened to in 34 states and 18 countries. And some of them are Zambia, Kenya, Tanzania, Brazil, Canada, 18 other countries, or 17 other countries besides the United States. That just blew my mind. And God don't let us have to let us see any results, but I, we don't know what he's doing out there, Ellen. But I'll tell you what he is doing. Whether we see it or not, he is calling out his sheep. Yes, sir. This little group here, that, that boggles my mind, Joe. Number four, Israel had priests and captains. And we have the priest and the captain, do we not? Isn't that what Hebrews calls Christ? Our great high priest. And he's called the captain of our salvation. Amen. I want him to lead me. Yes, sir. I want him to call the shots. Yeah. I don't want to be the captain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are times when I don't even want to be here, yeah, let alone be the captain. And I definitely don't want to try to be the captain of my salvation. I would screw it up for sure. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. We can compromise on some things. Yeah. We can compromise whether we want pews or seats like these and maybe even leave some tables up. Yeah. We can compromise on stuff like that. We can compromise whether they sing out of this songbook or that songbook. Yeah. Anyway. We can compromise on whether we want to have that piano or maybe buy another piano. There's a lot of things we can compromise on. 
We sit here, and a lot of people do it that way, and we have a, a person pass out the bread and the wine. Not every Grace Church does it that way. When we went to St. Croix, it wasn't done that way, was it? It wasn't done that way. I'm not saying one way is better than the other. We compromise on something. It don't matter. Yeah, exactly. It don't matter. We can compromise on whether we want a, a baptistry or whether we just want to go to the creek or the pond. Right? It don't matter. But we don't compromise the gospel. Amen. Don't dull the edge of the sword of the gospel or the edge of the sword of this truth of this book. There's two things that God teaches all his people. Who Jesus Christ is and who they are. And their place under, yeah. under yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, Amen. it amazes me. Yeah, I know we're small in numbers. We, we, we're about as weak as you can get. You can't get much smaller than we are other than just living in the house with, you, with your wife or husband or something. You can't get much smaller than that. Hmm? But you folks for years, and even longer than I've been around, have stuck with the stuff. When everything around us is compromised the truth, compromised the truth. Don't tell people they're that bad. Yeah, tell people they're that bad. Because that's where God's got to bring you to. Well, I mean, that's where God will bring you to if you're one of his. Mason, would you close us in prayer and ask, thank God for the food, please?